Hey guys, and thanks for joining us. This is I-80 Sports. We're talking today about the MLS is back tournament. We are in person, in, in the flesh. So thank you for, for coming, Alex. Um, welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, uh, it's great to be back. Bob, this setup you have here, ESPN would be jealous. I mean, this is unbelievable what we have going on here. I mean, look at all this electronic equipment, high tech it, yeah, it, it looks good to the people watching, but if you were behind the scenes, you see these <laughs> wires running across the ground. Like people were, were not happy about this going on. So um, we're back. We're talking MLS, and let's get right into it. This is going to be uh, one episode. If you're listening on any of our uh, podcasts, we're on we're on every app that you can think of. So we're going to be shooting this all in one episode. But if you're watching on YouTube, we're going to split it up once for each group. So just keep that in mind that we're we're kind of. Uh, and it's going to be splitting this up if you're watching the video. But if you're listening on audio, it's all going to be in one clean run. First up is Group A. Group A for this tournament is going to be Orlando City, Inter Miami, NYCFC, Philadelphia, Union, Chicago Fire, and Nashville SC. Yes, if you are counting, that is six teams. Most divisions have four. This division has six because there are an odd number of teams. Um, so let's jump right in and talk about some of the storylines we're going to see from from these groups. A lot of one of these teams match up. There's some history. There's some rivalry. First, two new teams, Nashville and Inter Miami, included in this group. It's going to be interesting because they haven't played a lot together, and by this time in the year, they would have hoped to have played what 10, 12, 15 games together, and they have not had that opportunity. So that's going to be something to to keep an eye out on if you're playing Nashville or Inter Miami. They have only played two MLS games ever. Um, we also had the Nashville SC was moved from the Western to the Eastern Conference. Now, that move is probably going to be permanent with Austin and Charlotte joining up next season. I mean, Nashville's on the East Coast. I don't understand why they'd be in the West Coast anyway. But, you know, we want to even out the East and the West. Sometimes this happens in pro sports. You know, Nashville, uh, to me... The, the fan base, if you guys paid attention the first two weeks before we went on there, they had 58,000 at the Titan Stadium. I mean, yeah. I mean, they have a fan base that they're, they're going to be a team to look out for in years to come. Not this year, obviously, because it's an expansion team, but the fan base over again excited. It's something really good for MLS. Absolutely. Um, definitely a team to watch out for. However, not in this tournament. Uh, we agree. also have an interesting storyline coming for in uh, Florida Derby, the first since the Tampa Bay Mutiny and the Miami Fusion. The two new teams are obviously uh, Inter Miami and Orlando City, who's only been around for, for, what, five years. So two new Florida teams matching up for the first time in 15 years, uh, if not longer. Uh, David Beckham uh, is here to make a statement. I'm very confident that... Uh, they will not be the worst team in MLS. He will not let that happen. They will go out and get players as the season goes on. They have a, a roster right now that's half decent. I mean, for expansion team, uh, definitely better than other expansion teams that come into MLS. Uh, they have money to spend, so they definitely have to. You can't overlook Inter Miami going forward. Definitely not. Absolutely. And one thing about Orlando City, um, they they're kind of still an expansion team too. Five years is not very long to be in this league, and and to to, to match some of that. They haven't made the playoffs yet. No, and you know the the Kaku, uh, Kaku, Kaka, Kaka. Yeah, uh, I'm got Red Bulls on my mind. Uh, did not work out. We're sorry to hear that. Yeah, we're sorry to hear that. <laughs> it, it did not work out. However, they did. They do still have Nani. Uh, he is dangerous. Uh, this 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 should be a really interesting rivalry. I mean, Orlando, Miami. It is going to be good. I mean, the, the fans are ready to talk and smack on the, on the boards. I mean, this is something that, that MLS needs rivalries, and this is perfect for the league. We, we, we were brainstorming on the ID Sports discussion group on Facebook what should be the, the name of the, the Derby. Um, and we, we came up with, like, the, the Denny's Derby or the, uh, the Retirement Home Trailer the Park House, Derby. The Waffle House Derby. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I'm not sure that's going to work. Again, you want to go down to August in Orlando or Miami, I mean, it is going to be hot down there. I mean, the, the, and this rivalry is going to be hot, let me tell you. Absolutely. Now, um, another short line to keep out for, five new coaches. Five new coaches here. Um, NYC have a new coach. Uh, and I think, uh, well, obviously the two expansion teams have new coaches. Um, the only team with the returning coach, I believe, is Philadelphia Union. Yeah, Jim Curtin. Uh, they had a good year last year, Philadelphia. And I, I think they're going to, in this group, I would definitely, they are a favorite to advance out of this group, in my opinion. 
All right. Um, so this is going to be an interesting group to, to predict because not every team is playing all the other teams uh, in, in the first stage, which is going to mess things up a little bit. Everyone has three games, but when you're in a division with five other teams, that leaves some odd men out. So I think there's going to be a, a little more chaos that definitely yeah. than may be expected. And I, w- I would say that that might even go to uh, – speak maybe more ties the tiebreaker is going to kind of come in here just because uh, when teams aren't matching up against each other you're not going to have that natural um who won the head to head and the goal difference is be a huge in this i'm not expecting like, when you're winning one nothing in these games i'm not expecting teams to just sit back and park the bus no, you gotta gonna, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to put balls in the net and not give up goals to advance in this tournament absolutely now we talked about the new coaches and all the other new stuff going on in group a the last thing i kind of wanted to bring up uh, for as far as our storylines go, um, unexpected changes in Chicago. Now that to me is the group wild card. Um, they signed a trio: uh, winger Gaston Jimenez, uh, Luka Stojanovic in midfield, and Boris Sakulic uh, right back. But those were all made between February fifteenth and February twentieth. Um, they were all expected to be starters for the team, and uh, they have never played an MLS game. And they have a brand new jersey, which I gotta say is oh, pretty yes. awful. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, that, that, that jersey is Chicago Fire. You're rebranding going into the, uh, the Soldier Field. I like going just, back to Soldier terrible. Field, but that, that jersey, I mean, whoever designed that really needs to, needs to be fired. Step, step down. It, it's, <laughs> not, it's not only the jersey, which is pretty bad. It's the logo. Oh, I the mean, whole thing look, is just... Look right. I, I got to point the right way. Right there. IED Sports. That logo took a couple hours. I'm not a professional. I made it myself. Like, come on, guys. What are we doing? What are we even doing? I, I don't know. I mean, but listen, while we're talking about Chicago, the, the, the guy that to look out for is Robert Barrich, the, the, the new center forward they brought in. This guy could score and score in bunches. And if he gets hot, I mean, Chicago's an unknown in his group to me. Six, seven new players, a new coach. Yeah, yeah. We don't, sure. know what, we don't know what Chicago is. He has a pedigree, Robert Barrich, and I, he could score. I mean, this is an interesting, in, interesting team. I don't know what to make out of them. I know they have an Argentina, Ignacio Las, Alasada they brought in. is supposed to be pretty good with Gaston Jimenez. Unknown, however. Unknown and not the yeah, time question to, mark. to work i got to put a question mark with Chicago Fire right now to me. I actually, a little spoiler, um, our last section is going to be players to watch and why, and I selected Barrich as, as my guy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go quickly to projected winners. I think NYCFC and Philly, they are the only two teams that made the playoffs last season. I think they're a lock, and the next spot is a toss-up. I think I like Chicago, and I'm going to predict a lot of my, my win-losses as if they're the next team. Um, again, we talked about before, Inter-Miami, Nashville um, have never had a full season. This tournament is weird for everyone, so who knows? Um, and Orlando's missed the playoffs five out of five seasons, so I have to assume they're not going to advance out of the group stage this season without really much to show on their roster. I, I know they're kind of home. They're playing now in the Walt Disney World. I don't know if, they, if any, I mean, no yeah. one has a home field advantage. I, again, they, uh, they brought in five or six South American players in the offseason, names that I'm not really familiar with. So, uh, again, Nani, Dom Dwyer, they're going to go as far as they go. However, like you said, they haven't been in the playoffs in five years. They might make third here. I mean, between Inter Miami, Nashville, and Chicago, that's a toss up. I, I'm not Nashville to me will not be a third team here. So let's cross them off the list. I know Walker Zimmerman, great center back they got, but that's all they really have. Uh, Chicago, we just talked about between Inter Miami and Orlando for me for the third spot. I like Inter Miami. Uh, I don't think Beckham's going to get embarrassed here. I think they're going to go on. I think they're going to be the third team here. I think they're going to eke out a, a result with Orlando and they're going to get the third spot here. Absolutely. Now, the last part of this segment before we move on to the next group is going to be players to watch and why. On IE Sports, we're about getting people who may not be into soccer into soccer. We, we want to get them to watch this sport. So we set up uh, for every primetime game, we set up discussion board threads that are going to be posted. So you guys should just head on over there and check it out because going to be a lot of people talking soccer, a lot of people getting a, the taste of it for the first time. And these schedules, yeah, there's a couple early games, 9 a.m. Games are 8 p.m. Eastern time, 10 p.m. Eastern time on nationally televised networks, some of the best exposure MLS has ever gotten. We need to know who to watch. Or we know who to watch. We, we need to tell you who to watch. Um, first one, I'm going to go uh, Gasper Shabilko um, from Philadelphia. Um, and one of the reasons why we're talking about sports, we're talking about um, stuff going on in MLS, he caught coronavirus. He had a mild case, 
He did recover, um, but he's a great player with a very high fitness level, and I want to see how he moves moving forward. We, we don't know a lot about this virus, how it affects professional athletes. If it takes 5% out of your lungs, that 5% out of your gas tank, well, you lost your competitive edge. So I want to see how he plays, and when we see these players with coronavirus come back on the pitch, we need to know what they can do, and that's going to depend a lot on the future of the NFL and, and Major League Baseball and all that stuff moving forward. So Katsper Shabilko, Philadelphia, great player, caught coronavirus coming back. Um, we wish him the best, and we're very interested in seeing how he plays moving forward. I'm a big Casper Shabilko fan, and the reason they were successful last year, because of him, a big, strong, powerful forward. He's good in the air, uh, fights off defenders. He's the key to this to, for them to score. Phil, last year, the only question mark I had about Philadelphia before he started showing up was their scoring. And he stepped up to the bill, and you know they eliminated the Red Bulls in the playoffs because of his, you know, his presence on the field. He's definitely a player to watch, and they go as far as he goes. And if he scores, they're going to advance, and they're going to go far in this tournament. Absolutely, absolutely. Philadelphia has always been kind of just one key piece away, and I think he may be that one key piece they were looking for last season. Um, my next player that I really want to watch is striker Robert Barich. Again, we talked about him um, in Chicago. I want to see what he brings to the table, specifically – Imani Nikolic, last season, he left a lot on the table in 2019. Um, if, Bar if Barrett can step up and be the guy to find the net more consistently, I mean, we're talking a very high scoring potential. Oh, absolutely. 20 goals plus season at Robert Barrett. Again, new coach. Uh, Wiki is the new coach. Again, they had the couple Latin players we mentioned before, Gaston Jimenez and Argentine Ignacio Alasada. Again, this is the unknown in this group. We don't know what Chicago has, but they have the potential to upset and be a surprise team in this tournament. Absolutely, and it's going to be on the back. Like, if you're a football guy, think about, uh, like, a running back in an Andy Reid system. That's what this striker has the, the capacity of doing, and Yamani Nikolic did not capitalize on it last season. Robert Barrett's definitely a guy to watch um, in the first round here. Um, and the last player, and I think we kind of hinted on this before, Inter-Miami, Pizarro. Uh, yeah. New in the league, scored in week two. Um, he's supposed to be their star with uh, Matias Pellegrini. We know Beckham brought these guys in mostly by name recognition. And if, if Beckham says, hey, these two guys can score, guess what? Oh, and they can score. I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe. Pizarro could score. You, you saw the week two. He can, this guy is a player. He, again, 20 goal potential. Uh, they have their, their first round pick, Robbie Robertson, started week one. He didn't look that good. Game two, he looked okay. Again, just like Chicago, they're relying on one guy. If they could, if Pizarro gets hot, Inter Miami's going to get hot, and they're going to advance. Diego Alonso, the coach Diego Alonso is one of the best coaches on this side of the planet. I don't expect them to get embarrassed in this tournament at all. Beckham's behind them. They have a great coach. They have a sniper forward. New team. They got the pink thing going on. Everyone seems to love. It. I I love it. Everyone, Everyone loved their uniform. They I, nailed it. They really. They that again. David Beckham is not stupid. They nailed everything so far with this kind franchise. Kind of that Miami Vice looking thing. It's it, all black with just some thin pink lines. No, They're little. It's Miami Vice. Two flamingos yeah. holding the M up. Just, just gorgeous. I mean, it's like Chicago and Miami are night and day. And it's you like, know, and you know that here's someone doing it right. Here's someone doing it absolutely everything wrong. And you know, Miami has a very Latin influence. They're gonna have a Latin, uh, definitely a Latin influence, a player wise coming in. Pizarro's gonna fit right in. And I'm telling you, this guy is seven the watch to look out for. He can score and he can score in bunches. Absolutely. That is our predictions for, th excuse me, those are our predictions from Group A, MLS's back tournament. Thank you for joining us.